don't worry about that state control or whatever. But like in this particular uh, narrow use case, you want to give uh, checks to individuals to get the economy moving again. Yeah. So if you think of programmable money that expires if you don't spend it. First off, I guess I'm wondering why you think 20K-ish has been defended so well over the last couple of months. Um, nobody knows for sure, but the last peak in 2017 was about 20K. And it's been below that for like a couple of years and been above that. So um, I think that's probably one of the reasons why there's a psychological barrier there. You don't think it's more, there's nothing regarding money supply or the NASDAQ or some of the other correlations we read about that's at play this time? I think all of those things factor in, but fundamentally the market has a, it's a mass psychology market, right? Every, any trading market is mass psychology. So the last barrier, the last support, the last all time high is probably the current all time low. Um, so that has a support uh, concept to it, yeah. So what do you think is the catalyst then for the next big move in price, up or down? Is it about regulatory granularity or a more institutional interest or return of the retail investor? So that part, I don't think anyone can forecast very accurately. Like, you know, nobody really for, uh, forecasted NFTs, DeFi, et cetera, which probably drove the last bull run. Um, before that, in the 2017, it was mainly ICOs. Six months before those things happened, very few people can forecast it. So for the next one, and now the market is so much bigger. There's so, there's so many more applications in the space. I'm not sure which one, but I think all of those things are moving in the positive direction. Um, the regu regulatory landscape is shaping up to be quite well. Most countries are adopting regulatory frameworks. They're not banning Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. Um, the macroeconomic situations, there's going to be high inflation. Um, let's talk about recessions, etc. All of those things drive adoption into Bitcoin or into crypto. Welcome, Welcome to the Crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And we have CZ on the price of Bitcoin. We know the only reason why Bitcoin hit 64000 is because the Fed was pumping cryptos and stocks. And the reason why it's down in the 20s range is because the Fed is shrinking liquidity. But the next bull run is going to come from adoption. And then, guys, we have Kevin O'Leary on the Inflation Reduction Act. And we know billionaires only tell us half the truth. This Inflation Act is going to hurt corporations. But it's being done on purpose so they can bring in the fourth industrial revolution. We have Steve Leesman stating that no one is coming to save you. Remember the NWO works on problem, reaction, solution. No stimulus, no rate cuts. And the reason why, guys, because they want these layoffs to happen. So they can bring in the robots, algorithms, and drones while the sheep go inside the metaverse. Bitcoin automation is going to bring in deflation. But guys, we're about two or three years away. There's going to be a lot of pain. And remember the crypto teacher told you because he knows when it comes to the new world order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Let's see if you're uh, happy at all that it's not three trillion. It's, it's less than, than um, uh, you know, than 500 billion even at this point, uh, Kevin. It's about 400 and supposedly reduces the deficit. It's the Anti-Inflation uh, Act. Uh, is there anything that you like about it? Joe, Anti-Inflation Act, how is it possible to print this much money without continuing to pour gasoline on the fire of inflation? I mean, there is no way this is going to reduce inflation. Now, you can debate the merits of climate change. I don't understand why drug prices have anything to do with climate change. That should be a separate initiative, a separate debate. Uh, we're, we're trying to stymie the companies that saved us from the pandemic. That doesn't sound like a good idea either. I'm basically never in favor of printing money, ever. It's a really bad idea after we've already printed six trillion dollars. I mean, at some point, you have to stop. And this is not stopping. And so I think there's going to be lots and lots of problems. Most of this is politically motivated going into the midterms. That This administration needs to get something done, anything done, 
when before voters go to the polling booths, because that's been a big problem. And the polls really tell the story. This is going to be one very difficult midterm election. And I think Biden, you know, is doing what he has to do to try and get something driven through. But this isn't going to save anything. This is going to be a really bad outcome for inflation. Really bad. Good morning, Steve. Hey, good morning, Becky. Yeah, if the U.S. is in or about to enter a recession, it could be a rougher ride for investors and American workers because Congress and the Fed are less likely to come immediately to the rescue this time. Fiscal and monetary stimulus have been the mainstays of Washington's recession playbook in the past, but it's unlikely given that they were part of the problem this time and more stimulus would do nothing but make inflation worse. In each of the past four recessions, the Fed has cut rates either ahead of or shortly after the recession was set to begin. The last time it brought them all the way down to zero, the last two times, that is, for extended periods. But Fed Chair Jay Powell said this week, far from working to fix an economy that's running below potential, the U.S. needs below potential growth. So the only help investors might get from the Fed, maybe fewer rate hikes, but definitely not cuts this time around. And in nine downturns going back to 1958, Congress has extended unemployment benefits, and the Fed usually, the federal government, that is, usually boosts spending to help stimulate demand. But Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said deficit reduction is an important part of the new inflation reduction. Which brings us back to that controversial recession debate. Do people need the kind of help, given how strong the job market is? Aneta Markowska from Jeffries saying yesterday the second quarter negative number signaled a recession without any of the normal implications. I quote here from her report, what's the opposite of a jobless recovery, a recession without layoffs, which is not really a recession. So as long as that's the case, and even if joblessness rises, the Fed can be expected to be raising rates and the federal government is going to be sitting on the sidelines. They'll only take out the classic, the classic recession book, I think, when this starts looking more like a classic recession. Guys, We're going to a different economy. And we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers in Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols? Who un controls the underlying standards? of the future of money will control the future of money. Powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figures. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. 
So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Joshua and Grandma Tim save the village. Part 2. King Joshua and Grandma Tim save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Joshua and Grandma Tim goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.